Hello everyone. Welcome to Maxim Automation. Today in this video, I'm going to talk about Shadow DOM. I'll discuss what a Shadow DOM is and how we can identify the elements under a Shadow DOM using Selenium. So let's get started. First of all, let's talk about DOM or Document Object Model. DOM is a tree structure of connected nodes where nodes represents the different elements in the HTML document. These elements and styles available in a HTML document are globally scoped. So any element in the HTML document, irrespective of the element location in the document tree, can access all the available styles. Now, if you want to keep the markup structure or style separate or hidden from other code on the page, so that the other element cannot access the style from other parts of the codes and can use its own implementation within its document. So to implement this, the shadow DOM can be used, which is used to hide a part of the document tree from other parts of the code. Let's say this is our document tree, where these nodes are the different elements available in the document. Now using shadow DOM, we can attach hidden DOM trees in the original DOM structure. So here this is our original DOM tree. And all the styles and elements available at any location can be accessed in this document. Now if you want to hide a part of code from the original tree, then we can add the part of the code using the shadow DOM. The other part of the code will also be a DOM tree which starts with a shadow root and under that root any element can be attached. So the root of the shadow DOM is called as shadow root. And here this element can contains other elements as we have in a regular DOM tree. And this DOM tree is called as shadow tree. And this shadow tree or shadow DOM is attached with one of the elements or nodes in the original document tree. So here, this node which contains a shadow DOM called as shadow host. Now using this shadow DOM, the code inside this tree cannot be affected from anything outside it, which basically allows to implement the concept of encapsulation. So this is about the shadow DOM element. Now we know why the shadow DOMs are being used. But the question is how to identify the elements using Selenium which are under the shadow DOM tree. So let's see how we can work with Selenium to identify these shadow DOM elements. Here I have a Chrome setting page which basically contains multiple shadow trees. And these elements which we can see here are part of the shadow DOM. And we cannot directly access these elements with Selenium by using the XPath or other locators. Let me first open the dev tool to see if we can inspect these elements. You can see these elements which I inspected, and here we can see that these elements exist under a shadow DOM. Because here we can see that shadow root mentioned, which means this is the root node of a shadow tree. And this element is called a shadow host because the shadow DOM is attached with this node. Now let me create XPath to identify this element. And we'll get to know whether we can directly access this element by using the XPath ID or any other locator. You can see that we don't have any item returned using this XPath. Though the XPath was correct, but because this element exists under a shadow DOM, so we cannot access this item directly by using the Selenium locators. To access these kind of elements, first we need to get the shadow DOM tree object. And then using the shadow DOM object, we can access these elements inside that tree. To traverse to the shadow DOM, we can either use JavaScript 
or can use the selenium get shadow root method to get the shadow dom object the method get shadow root is now available in selenium 4 to get the object of shadow dom now here in this chrome setting page we have multiple nested shadow doms so we need to traverse to each shadow dom until we move to our target shadow dom this is almost similar like we work with iframes to identify an element inside an iframe where first we need to move to the iframe and then only we can access the element and in case of multiple iframes we have to keep switching to iframes until we reach the target iframe so here also let me start with the original document tree where we have the first shadow host node this settings ui node is the shadow host because we can see it has shadow dom attached with it first i'll find this shadow host by using xpath because it's a part of the original document tree so we can directly find this element using selenium locators and then using this shadow host element i'll get the object of the shadow tree so let's move to the code and here first i'm gonna set up chrome driver by using the driver manager and then i'll create the object of chrome driver After that, let me create the iWeb element object. And then I'll find the shadow host element by using driver dot find element. And I'm going to use XPath to find the element. Currently, the code is gonna return only this element but we need a shadow tree object to access the elements under this tree. And the method which we can use to get the shadow DOM is get shadow root. So this will return the root element of the shadow DOM. And now using this root element, we can find any elements under this shadow tree. Now let's move to the page to see the next element which needs to be found. You can see here we have another shadow host which has another shadow tree attached with it and a desired element exists somewhere under this shadow tree so the next element which we need to find is this another shadow host and i'm going to use the css selectors here to locate the object please note down that we cannot use other locators like xpath to find the elements under a shadow tree using the shadow root object we can use css selectors to locate the elements in the shadow tree and then i'll again use the get shadow root method to get the shadow root node now we have traversed to this location and if i move more into the downside then i can see there is another shadow dom attached with the shadow host so this chrome setting page is one of the good examples to do practice to locate the elements under the shadow dom now to identify the element again i need to use the css selector because if i use another locator like xpath then it will throw the invalid locator exception then similarly i need to find this setting section node because we have another nested dome over here first i'll use the get shadow root method to get the shadow root node and then i'll find the next element which is the setting section node here we can see that we have an immediate shadow host 
which has another shadow DOM attached. So now I'll find this element. And because this element can be directly accessed from the settings section node. So I don't need to get the shadow root object here. And you can see now I can use the locators like tag name as well. Because I'm not searching for an element using the shadow root object. Now let's see if we have used the correct sequence to traverse to the element. And before that, let me add the code first to open the browser and to navigate to the Chrome setting page. Now, if I run this test, then you can see our test is passed, means the element is successfully found. Now, let me show you if I use another locator instead of CSS selector to locate an element using the shadow root, then what error we are going to receive. And now if I run the test again, then you can see the test is failing. And in the logs, we got the exception as invalid locator. So that's why we cannot use any other locator while searching for the object using the shadow root. Now let's move to the setting page again to find the desired element. So we have traversed this element so far and to get the shadow root of Tom attached with it, I'll use the get shadow root method again. And then if I see over here, then we need to find the next shadow host which contains the desired element. So here this settings toggle button is the next shadow host element which we need to find. So let's add the code for the same. Now we can see that this is the shadow DOM where my element exists. This is the CR toggle element which I was looking for. And this element exists under the current shadow DOM, which means now we don't need to move again to another nested shadow DOM. And I can find this element using the current shadow root object. Because now I have found my element, so I can use the element.click method to perform the click operation on it. Now, let me run the test to see if it works. You can see. It clicked on the element, but it was so quick. So let me add a pause over here so that we can see the element to be clicked. And I'll add a pause after clicking as well. And then we'll quit the browser. Now let me run the test again. You can see. It clicked on the element and close the browser. So this is how we can locate an element inside the shadow DOM to perform the operations. We can use the get shadow root method or JavaScript to locate the element. But we cannot directly access the element using the Selenium locators. For example, let's suppose if I comment out my code to locate the element using get shadow root method. And if I try to access the element directly, then what is going to happen? So let me directly find the element using the driver object and by providing the CSS selector. Now, if I run the test again, Then you can see the test is failed. And we got the error in the log as unable to locate element because the element under a shadow DOM cannot be located directly.
So this is how we can locate an element inside the shadow DOM to perform the operations. I hope you liked this video. Please put your comments in the comment box. Also, please do not forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.